story of uh, Owen and Hatchie. Here we are in the main arena. This is well, those are the five amazing stories. It's that story of Owen and Hatchie is really quite extraordinary, isn't it? Here we have the main ring now in front of us for the next event, as you're sure you can see, is going to be an agility event, and of course the competitors will have to walk the, the course. But this is a novice event, and I'm going to start... Uh, by bringing in my lovely colleague Graham Partridge again uh, to explain, I mean, I know what a novice uh, is, but uh, let's explain it in terms of this dog competition, what it is. In respect to this dog competition, Peter, uh, in this country we have seven grades. It used to be uh, a lot less, but due to the popularity of the sport, I mean, we have thousands and thousands of dogs competing every weekend. They decided to further split it, and we now, we now run with seven grades. The dogs that we're going to be seeing competing here are grades three, four, and five, or were at the time they qualified. They could have progressed up through the grades now, but all the dogs that you're going to see here have uh, qualified at the International Agility Festival, which is the largest agility festival in the world, uh, and they've qualified to compete here at Crufts. We've got the three height categories, small, medium and large. It's a two-part competition. They had a jumping round this morning and what we're going to see this afternoon is the second and concluding part of the competition and agility round. It's a separate competition in its own right. They will then add the two scores together and come up with an overall winner uh, for the Novice Cup. Fine, OK, and we should explain that uh, it is a small, medium and large competition. So we have uh, little dogs, we have the next size dogs and so on. So there'll be a change in the height of uh, some of the obstacles. I think we start with the, with the smallest ones, don't we, as a rule? So uh, they'll be at the lowest level when we, uh, when we start this event. But we've got um, 16 dogs and handlers taking part, four, four small, four medium, and eight of the large. And uh, the height, um, for the small dogs, uh, the the hurdles are just 350 mil, which is uh, one and it's one hard to one look three at quarters. the way. That's one and three quarters. Yeah, that, 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 there's a, a very strange one in front of me there. One and three quarter inches high, so they're not very high at all. Um, and uh, the medium, actually, that, uh, say one three quarter. It's it's one foot. One um, and three quarters. One and three quarter feet high. And then one and a half feet high for the medium. And for the large, it's two and a half feet high. So, so the A-frame uh, is five. That doesn't change, actually. That's five feet seven to its apex. And uh, the contact points at the ends are three feet six. So there's plenty of margin there. The dog shouldn't make mistakes on it, but they do. And uh, the contacts on the dog walk and the seesaw are slightly smaller. They're just three feet, so the six inches difference in those. Um, these are all a matter of detail because I introduced agility on television to Crufts Dog Show back in 1978. It didn't look like this then, did it, Graham? <laughs> I, I, don't, I wasn't doing agility in 1978, Peter. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, it, the sport has evolved uh, over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, it's just dramatic. I mean, most countries now in the world. Uh, do agility and places that you wouldn't think of necessarily. I mean, it's extremely big in Russia, uh, China. Uh, I've just come back from a trip to Japan uh, where I was judging in December. Absolutely fabulous time, lovely people, but uh, it's just a worldwide sport. And the Brits are still just hanging on to being about best, aren't they? Uh, we've had, a, had an absolutely storming year at the World Championships yeah. this year. Um, but yes, we are just about hanging on, but uh, it, it's one of these sports that people strive to get better and better and better. We invented it, as you say, Peter, um, but uh, 
uh, people don't take long because it's such a popular sport. But what I'd like to stress just before this competition gets going, it's not just about competing at the highest level as we see dogs here. It really is a sport for all. I mean, just about any sort of dog you've got. I mean, apart from the, the giant breeds do struggle slightly, but you can still do it for fun. Yes. Get out, have some fun with your dog. Find a, a kennel club, uh, dog training club, uh, which is on the internet. Go along, take your dog, have some fun. Fine. Well, out there in the moment, uh, the uh, competitors are taking a look at the course and seeing where they have to go. Very important that they actually uh, walk it and see where they go. And uh, at this point, they're determining where they're going to be standing, how they bring the dogs around, because a movement of a shoulder, a hand, a knee, a foot can make all the difference to the way that the dog actually takes these obstacles and the slightest incorrect movement can throw the dog and of course if your dog goes off course you're probably going to be disqualified unless you uh, manage to retrieve it before you go past the point of no return so lots of opportunity to fail what do you reckon to this this particular course i've got a map of it in front of me and uh, it really does uh, because there's one or two tight turns. I always say there's some nasty traps there, but you put you say those are the challenging moments. No, I, I, I refer to them as handling points, Peter. Handling points. Yeah, yeah. And as, as a judge, you, you never set traps for the dog. You always set handling points. Handling I mean, that's a bit points. of a debatable point, but these people are out walking this course. Uh, this is a, an individual course which has been designed uh, by the judge, Dick Farrar. Um, they won't have seen it until about half an hour ago when they were given a copy uh, no, of we the course plan on paper. Oh, yeah. This is the first opportunity to see it uh, in real life, so to speak. So, and they'll probably have about five or ten minutes uh, here, usually a bit longer uh, in a competition, a week to week competition. But uh, they're looking, as you say, to see, right, where do I think my dog's going to be? Where would I like to be to get it from one obstacle to the other? And bearing in mind, it's for those people that may not uh, have seen agility before. They have to complete the course in the correct order. So this op this course, there are 20 obstacles. They have to do them in the correct order, otherwise they're eliminated. And they have to do it within uh, within a certain time. I haven't got the fit of the time on this, the course time, uh, but I will have it before we start. So this will be uh, a course, as I say, set by Dick. He'll have set it um, appropriate for the grades that he's judging. Yes. Uh, yeah. Later on, you'll see um, a competition that we should be doing, which is called the British Open. That's eligible for dogs of grades six and seven. So that, that should be slightly more difficult than the course that we have in front of now us. Now, I'm, I'm seeing in front of me here the course uh, which actually says uh, Judge Dick Farrar. And we are looking at the right one. But here we've got the novice code. It says Judge Bob Griffin. I think, that's, I think that's, a, that's a clerical error. Bob, was, Bob judged the uh, fast part of, first I part of it this so. morning. That's right. So he did the jumping. Uh, we should explain, this is a competition in two parts. Jumping this morning, this is now agility. Uh, and that is the judge. That was uh, Dick Farrar there. So the times we now have, the small and medium dogs have 40... Uh, have, uh, uh, 45 seconds, uh, 50 seconds for small and medium, and 45 seconds for the large dogs. So fairly tight, but it is a novice competition, so I suppose we ought to be looking at something that is somewhat less challenging than some of the more complicated events like the championship, which is, of course, is uh, going to be coming up uh, later. Uh, the course, as we look at it in the wide shot, which you have been seeing quite a lot, starts in that right-hand bottom corner, and the second, that having jumped that, there we are, that's one. Number two is actually mark seven there because it's two jumps there. Two and seven are the same jump. There we are, you can see. And then they have a sharp right turn to go over the next one, which is three. So that's how they start. And then uh, after that, they have a complete turn round to come back to the dog walk over that. So there are, th that again is a good handling point because the dog's gone away from where they've got to go next and they've got to come right the way around. And there's another jump over there which could get in their way as well. But the camera's doing a wonderful job of taking you the way around this course. That's uh, jump number five, or rather it's tunnel number five, the soft tunnel. Yeah, they've got and to watch the back of three. Again. And what are they going to do? Turn right and go the wrong way again? Lots of opportunities to get it wrong, but with good handling, very manageable. 
And then, of course, it's uh, as I say, it's all down to course design, really. Uh, Dick will want to have set a, a flowing course. He also wants to make sure that he can position himself uh, in the best place to mark every dog uh, as well as he can. Yes. Um, and I should say, uh, judging in agility is just like judging at rugby or football or anything like that. You give yourself the best chance of getting it right, but we're human. Unfortunately, in this sport, we don't get the uh, option of a, of a TMO or a, th a third match official or instant replays, <laughs> unfortunately. He has to make a decision. Instant uh, decision. And the thing is that if he's unsighted or unsure for anything, because dogs are dogs and they could go any way, he will give the benefit of the doubt to the handler, which is yep. only right. You should never guess whether a dog's made a contact or missed a contact. If he, if he didn't see it, he'll let the dog get away with it. Yes. And that's the fair way to do yep, it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you don't see it, you can't uh, penalise it in any way, can you? Uh, well, I've seen some people do it, uh, but there we go. That's <laughs> another. That's a subject for another day. But it is. There's a nice flowing course here. Um, it gives them every chance because bearing in mind that uh, the vast majority of all our competitions are held outside on grass. Uh, so this surface, especially to some of these younger dogs, will be will be totally alien. And it does take dogs sometimes a little while to get used to getting their grip on it. So we might see some of these novice dogs just slipping a bit more than the more experienced dogs. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the ring announcer is now just uh, announcing to the audience here. They've stopped playing the music because uh, I think everyone's set up. You can see the, the ring helpers moving around to different parts of the ring because it does need a lot of people in the agility. We make sure that everything is in exactly the same position for each of the dogs to go. But here comes our judge now. It's Dick Farrar. He's coming in. He's from Hinkley, which is just up the road. No distance down the A5 here to um, Hinkley. And uh, he has set this... I think rather interesting course, very nice. So we're going to start with the small dogs, so all the jumps are set to this uh, small lowest height, and uh, the first dog we've got coming in is Martin Waits with Adora Bubble, and uh, they had five faults, they didn't go clear this morning in the jumping round, this is the agility round, and... Uh, and they're running in reverse order from where they finished so after the jumping round. The, the least good uh, shall we say, in the jumping competition is now going in the agility. Jumping means that they don't have the, they purely do the jumps as we go. So here we go, there should be not, very tight, oh, dog's already gone, wrong course and eliminated right at the start. Now that was unfortunate, the dog just not playing, uh, paying attention whatsoever, but uh, I think what actually happened there, Peter, was she just took her eyes off the dog momentarily. She assumed the dog was following absolutely. her. Absolutely. Uh, the dog went round. Never turn your back on your dog. Absolute shame. This is a little terrier cross, four years old. It's a little bitch. And uh, they come from Dartford. Bubble's first appearance at Crofts. It won't be the last. I'm sure it won't. And just Staffy Cross. And just to, to stress, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a support for all mongrels, pedigrees, and you can do it with anything. Any dog can take part. Well, people think that Crofts is only pedigree dogs. No, the no, agility no. competitions and all the others, any any breed can take part. It's uh, absolutely free. So that's Martine. And Unfortunately, they were disqualified. She goes over three, time. she turns her back, and look, not looking at the dog at all. That's such a shame. She'll be gutted. But as you say, she'll be back. And our second dog's already on the course. This is Dana Cooper with Jazz, Jazz the Toy Poodle. And, and unfortunately there, Dick, uh, picking up a, an elimination there. Well, now she, they're, they're over announcing the back of eight. that the timer's not working. Ah. So uh, that, that would be a problem. And I think she's going to get a restart. Right. The rules in this case say that if, in the opinion of a judge, a rerun is deemed necessary, it shall be from scratch. So and I think she's getting the rerun. Lucky escape, we have to say, with that one. Yeah, much better start that time. So, and as you say, making the contact points. Nice little uh, toy poodle, this one. Register name's Bucket in a Million. <laughs> a phantom toy poodle, a rescue dog, five years old. And uh, Diana says she has a wonderful bond with him. He's a lovely little chap. Nice and neat through the weave. Dick Farrow making sure that the dog completes the weave properly. And so far, all going well. 
Do you know, a couple of sharp little turns coming up here before a nice run to the finish. Seesaw first. He's not heavy, he's not heavy enough to pull me. He <laughs> just, but he's got to wait till he comes to the ground. There it is. And they will get a time on that. But I don't think we've got automatic timing on this at the moment. So here we go. Look, over this seesaw, here he comes. Uh, Ooh, just heavy fantastic. enough. Fantastic. Just heavy enough. Well done. <laughs> And well, that wasn't an elimination there, so that's uh, a good one now. Just see these. See we a lot haven't of these been given the time yet, but uh, sorry. Go no, on, no, no, I was going to say a lot of these dogs wearing collars, Peter. Uh, I'll explain a bit more about that in a moment. This is Flex. Flex is a, a little Norfolk Terrier cross. Four years old. Oh, fault there, coming off on the contact point, but making it this time. Oh. My word, this, is, this, this little dog's not really concentrating. It's losing the flight. There we are, bring it round nicely. It's caught up now. And oh, wrong entry. The wrong entry. Wrong side of the weeds. You have to come in from the right-hand side and didn't. So one more fault. Oh, and there's another fault. And that's an elimination. Absolutely, he, you must finish the weeds correctly before you move on to the next obstacle. A lot of errors in there, a lot of errors. Little, nice little dog. But... Again, no timing's been given. It doesn't matter yet. We've only one dog in this miniature side, in the small side, uh, that uh, can even get a score here as we watch uh, uh, Flex there finish off, but disqualified. Such a shame. And uh, there we go. We're coming on and starts to go Whoops. up the contact and, and then straight across. off the other side. And yeah. that's counted as a refusal because it didn't get as far as the down plank. And then it must go to the right side of the first pole. Uh, made two faults in that uh, weed two as well. Refusals, which is a shame. Yep. We've got a working cocker now. I love these working cockers. They're really quite quick. Two years old. This one's called Jesse with Zoe Council from Guildford in Surrey. It's a little bitch, as I said, just two years old. Interesting that they hold uh, the, the dog's been taught to stop on the contact point because obviously that must have had a fault before. It'll do it again here. There it is. Just that little check. She's just making sure that the dog gets the contact point. Uh, if she was in a real rush, she would release it much quicker. She wouldn't have a, have a slight delay. You can watch it again on the seesaw, but perhaps on the moving seesaw it won't be quite so obvious. But uh, interesting little thing. But this, uh, this looks like a quicker run. Oh, jumped off. That's a five there. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, she was taking it quite steadily. Uh, and uh, as you see, you'll see that she comes here and she'll have a little pause. That's good. That's how she trains it. Bearing in mind these are younger dogs. Coming on to that. Yep. Jumped off too soon. And clearly the seesaw wasn't on the ground before the dog got off. That's right. Fine. Well, we, we don't have the times on that, but by my reckon, I think Dana Cooper with uh, Bucket and a Million is in the lead, but we'll just have to check. I haven't got the time. We're moving up now to the medium uh, dogs. This is uh, everything raised slightly, about six inches higher, all the jumps. Renato Mandovi with Chasey, which is a Koika Honda, a little Dutch dog. This is a three-year-old bitch, and the hometown here for them is Prague. So they've come a nice long way to take part here. Yep, she would have been over at the International Festival competing, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. As many people as we can from uh, Europe competing, it just makes it uh, makes it a great competition, really. But it uh, gives us a chance to see how they handle dogs uh, in Europe. Absolutely, and an interesting breed to have here, a Koika Honda. You don't see many of them in this country, yeah, for yeah. sure. And that's nice. There that's a clear run. Around. That was clear. Again, no time. But that was very nice. Nicely made contact, wasted no time at all there. Nice tight turns, slipping just a little bit there on the carpet, but doing very well. And she's going to make sure that seesaw touched the ground, and that was fantastic. Now, we'll never be sure whether the dogs are quicker or slower until we actually see a time, which we're not getting here in our commentary position, nor are you at home. But uh, it's Claire Gosling with Barney. Barney's a Tibetan Terrier. As we said, all sorts of breeds take part in this. Five and a half years old, this one. 
Yep, it's not necessarily about the out and out speed, it's all to do with um, tight turns. The tighter you can get a dog to turn around, the less time you can spend waiting at the end of contacts. Uh, yeah, exactly. Tenths of seconds matter. Well, this is a nice little dog. Barney. Now you see instantly they don't uh, scoot along the ground quite as fast as the miniature dogs, but they cover the ground just as quickly. But they have a longer stride. Absolutely. These medium yep. dogs. Going clear so far. Won't put the commentator's curse on it. I should <laughs> never say that. But again, they've Neat. wasted no time on the contact speed, so it may not look the quickest. Um, see a nice tight turn there, that was fantastic. And another one there. But some, some of the little dogs, some of the small dogs, scoot around, they slide on the yeah. ground. But that's, that's a very nice run. Uh, again, I haven't got a time, but it's a clear round. There you go, you watch, she won't waste any time. There we go, run straight off the end, nicely made contact. Here we go, look at this. Right round the wing of that jump, absolutely lovely. Makes it slightly easier because they're not going quite as quickly, but uh, ah, here we go. Finally been given the time, 40.31 for the last over. I don't know if that's slower or faster than Renata Mandova and Chasey, who was before them. Uh, here we go with Georgia de la Cour with Obi. Obi's an English spring spaniel. He's a five-year-old dog and they come from uh, the island of Jersey and they're eliminated because they took the wrong course. Straight forward, straight forward elimination there. So unfortunate, but uh, well, they're carrying on around the course. The dog doesn't know it's made a mistake and we'll be absolutely delighted at the end. Fact, uh, Jersey, uh, it's a growing sport in Jersey. And in fact, they've just started doing it in Guernsey as well. Oh it's really? Uh, yeah, excellent. The Island Dog Training Club, yeah. So if anyone's watching from Guernsey, hello to them. So well done, that's unfortunate there, just picking up an elimination. Here comes the elimination. And she nicely over. Down. And look where she's facing. Oh, she the pointed dog. the dog there. Absolutely. She did, didn't she? Yeah. Straight away. Yeah. Yeah. But that's nerves as well. And there's the elimination signal. Another springer on the start line. This is Alfie. <laughs> look at that top knot. <laughs> Am I surprised to be here, or what? What's going on? Look at that, but look, he's ready to go, Pete. He's going to have fun. Alfie and Laura Staplehurst, they come from Epsom. And uh, Alfie is three years old. I'm sorry we're not giving you the times on the screen. Oh, it is! We've got one at last. Now we have a clock. That's so nice. It's always nice to see. It's reassuring. This is a rescue dog, by the way. Starts off as a very nervous little dog, but uh, nice and secure now. And good high jumps, but they, they slow him down a little bit. But the time I've got to beat at the moment, as far as I can see, is 40.31. Um, and they might just do it. They might just do it. They Come have. Well done, but the Alfie. clock seemed to stop early there, but anyway, we'll see where we are. And I think he lost just a little bit of time here on the dog walk, Peter. I think he's going to have a good look at... Who are you, he says. Goodness gracious. Yes, there, our clock started too soon. 41 point something, so not in the lead. Look at that, having a bark as well, saying, come on, let's get on with it a bit quicker. Fantastic. Well, at least we had three clear rounds there and one elimination during the course of that event. That was the medium, we're coming on to the large dogs now. And the first one to go is Chris Pointchester. With Todd, a five-year-old border collie, again from Jersey. So it was getting popular. Yeah. They had an awful lot of halts this morning <laughs> in the jumping. An awful lot of halts. I wasn't going to mention that, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well, the combination, there, there, there will be a result at the end of this competition for the competition that you're currently watching, but there's also the combined competition, which is quite important for them, which is the overall. And Chris, Chris is better than he was this morning. He'll want to do well this afternoon just to show you that he can uh, strut his stuff. There you go. Call the dog nicely there. This is a grade five dog, which uh, is pretty up the top end of the novice, isn't it? Yep, it is. Uh, I think he qualified there at the... Uh, dogs in need. Top. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Dogs in need show, that's right. The last run he had in 2012. 
Now that looked pretty quick to me. There's a 48, 45 second time on this. They'll be well inside that. We were talking about um, nice tight turns earlier on. Uh, and as unfortunately Chris just lost a little bit. You see here the dog drifts such a lot wider. There you go. He's two or three yards wider than the small dog. But never mind. He'll be pleased with that. Yes. Well done, Chris. No, good stuff there. Clear round. You're always pleased with a clear round, aren't you, when you've done one of these? Lucy Walden next with Exmoor Kangaroo Kid. Pet name of this one is Missy. This is a, an, a Kelpie, an Australian Kelpie. They tend to be very fast, but not always accurate. Let's see how they go. It's a little bit seven years old. Come, currently competes at grade five, so again, good standard. Yeah, just a little bit steady through the weaving poles, but uh, hopefully she'll have seen what's gone before and know no. what she's got to do. The tactics and do come into this. Whoops, a little bit slow around there. But yeah, they're coming on. Again, I can't, uh, I can't help you with the times. I'm ever so sorry that we're not showing it on screen. Good round, though, clear go, round. Look. That's Goes all important. Straight into his toy there. That's what it's all about, having fun. And again, we'll see, although the dog's just slightly slower, she gets a much better turn. And that's going to help her with her time overall. Well, this is Lisa Bailey with the Border Collie Maya. Maya is a five-year-old bitch. Rian Star Appeal at Castomia. Yeah, Lisa been competing on the circuit for a number of years now. Uh, probably better known for running s small dogs, but she's uh, she's now running border collies. I was almost said for a minute she's seen the light and running border collies, but I would get in terrible trouble for saying that. <laughs> no, uh, that's what she's chosen to run now. Very experienced handler that's though. Quick. Yeah. And then slow down coming off there. Just this is, well, this is nice. again, as you say, tactics. She knows the dog's quick across the ground. That was interesting. The dog really took a glance at it to see where we're we going next. Just looked around. Very aware. This is fast. And nice and low over the jumps. Nice yeah. and tight Don't on want the to turns. drive it too quick. That was nice. Yep. And again. Well, this looks good. This this has got to be in Just the frame. Steady it down for the Got six to be in the frame. Yep. Ah, oh, well in sixth place in the jumping, but a clear round here in the agility. Everyone, it's something good. to prove Just if they weren't sure in the top, this contact. Uh, Beautiful. top two or three from this morning. They really feel they've got something to prove. She's getting to the jump before the dog to show it which way it's going to go. The longer you can stay in front of the dog, the better, because then it takes uh, the guesswork out of it. Jan Fox here with uh, Luna, another border collie. They come from Sandy in Bedfordshire. The four-year-old bitch, this one. Luna, the name of the dog. Oh, oh and eliminated. Oh, dear. That was a sad elimination there. Fast little dog, but uh, took a wrong course. Yep, but in fairness, I think... Uh, She'll review that as I'm going to in a minute. And uh, a stray arm came out. Yeah. Sent the dog over the wrong jump. Yep. But there you go. Yeah. Whoa. Well done. Such a shame. But look, say so the dog gets his reward. And there we go. Yeah. So unfortunately, she just. Uh, had her arm out, but there you go. Well, this is a novice competition. Beep is the dog, another boy of the collie, a five-year-old bitch. Nothing novice about the handler, Tony Dawkins. Absolutely. She's represented Great Britain on a number of occasions at the European and the Worlds um, with her uh, medium border collie called Minx. And she won several events here last year. Yeah. yeah. This is her young dog, uh, hoping for great things. She says she doesn't care what happens to her as long as Beep's happy because uh, she reckons this little dog was too scared to run in competition. So to get even get to this competition is a good achievement. She's had to work really, really hard to build the dog's confidence. And as Tony, as usual, she's a great dog trainer, done a fantastic job, and she'll be really pleased if she can get him clear here. Yeah, you watch her, she'll be nice and pleased with him. I'm absolutely clear, but I don't think particularly fast. And but well that. done. Yep, they were fourth in the jumping competition this morning. But really quickly down that A-frame. 
And again, Tony making sure that the dog can see her. A little bit of a slip there, but that's an experience, I think. And this dog is only going to get better, I think, uh, as the next year or so progresses. And now we've got uh, Claire Arend from Jackson in Durham in Norfolk. Ginny is her border collie, four years old. Trains at Coltishall Agility Club. And Claire says this is the sweetest dog she's ever known. Always tries her hardest. And it's in with a real shout here, Peter. It's covering the ground very quickly indeed. A bit tentative, I thought, at the yeah. beginning of the weave. But that, oh, my word, yes. And quick. that could this be the, the, gr the uh, carpet, you see. Now she's getting into her stride. I think she's going to be it, well in Somewhere contention. Somewhere in there, yeah. We can't give you the time, but it's a clear round. Certainly in con contention. And they were third this morning in a time of 31.56 in the jumping this, competition. The dog is focused on the handler all the time. No hesitation, straight into the weaves. A little bit of a mix-up with the feet going through, but uh, hey, it's a young dog. We have only two to go. This is Ozzy, a working sheepdog, three years old, known as Cool Beans. Susie Josty is the handler. Those I'm just given a time of 33.75 for Claire's last run. Uh, I don't know where that fits in uh, with uh, the others that have gone. I just heard that from the uh, uh, commentator in the ring. They're getting more information than we are. Lovely weight there. Always need a good weight and agility. Always helps. She'll get to where she wants to be. Very nice. Again, another very experienced handler, Susie. Comes from Wales. No time wasted there, Peter, at all. She's positioning herself very well. Absolutely. There was no chance of the dog going wrong where two or three of the others have done. And now she's... Yes, this is guiding well. Look at her. She's starting to move away from the dog. Oh, a catch could turn there. We'll talk about those later. Very today. nice. Yeah, very nice, Susie. And again, we'd like to know the time. So you watch the way she trusts the dog. It's going to go into the weaves. I think you can just get a glimpse of the handler. She's moving away from the dog. That's great trust, which puts her up onto that end jump to stand still to say we're going to turn. Very nice, Susie. Well done. And the time of that was 34.6, so they're slower than uh, Claire Arend, but I don't know that Claire was in the lead. I've only, the only two times I've got for these large dogs, that's all I have at the moment. Um, Will Rolf going now, another experienced handler with Fonz, his border collie is two years old. Fonz is actually his wife's dog, and uh, when Sue was injured, his wife, uh, he ran, uh, he's taken over to run uh, this dog. Loves the agility. The dog, that is. Well, I think Anne Wilf done, Wilf done as well. He uh, he won the championship last year. Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, all his dogs just seem to, to like the, the atmosphere. Yeah, some do, is, some don't. It's quite a young dog. He's only two, yeah. this one. Two-year-old dog. They come from Andover, down in Hampshire. There and you that go. Was, well, I well. think that was fast. Now, they were the leaders after the jumping competition. That would not surprise me if they won. If I think you'll see, though, is he loses a second or so just about here. Just, just a pause. Just loses a yes. second or so there, and a second in this competition could uh, be a lot. Absolutely. Though he won the jumping competition by almost two seconds. Yep. So the, the dog is fast. There's no question about that. But we had a, a lot of clear rounds there. We had seven, in fact, of the eight of the large dogs. My guess would be, and this is a guess is that Will Rol Rol Rolf has won the overall competition, and my guess is also that he was probably the fastest on that. But we don't have it yet. We will let you have the results of that as soon as we can. I'm just hoping that we do have the times when we come into our next competition shortly. Um, but that was the novice competition. Enjoy it, uh, Graham. Absolutely. Uh, and as you say, we must remember that they were novice dogs, although you wouldn't have seen it to see, thought it to see some of them go around. Um, they're not used to the carpet, uh, they're not used to the atmosphere, they're young dogs. Um, I thought they did tremendously well. I thought Dick designed an absolutely fabulous and absolutely on the button novice course, absolutely appropriate for the grade of dogs that he was judging. You, um, would you say perhaps the, 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 uh, the, the time was a little generous? 
because the, the, the ones that we have seen that have actually got into the frame, as it were, are down in the low 30s, and they offer, they offer them 45 seconds for the large. So it seems quite a, quite a gap there. It's uh, something that we're, we're actually looking at at the moment um, within the Kennel Club. I'm part of my remit within the Kennel Club is to, uh, to do with judges training, uh, formulating it, delivering it. Um, but we're looking at course times and we're going to actually insist that judges measure courses. Now, I know exactly what was going through Dick's minds today and it's, it will go through my mind for when I do my course on Sunday. The times that we work out is for when they're running on grass, when they've got optimum yeah. grip outside. This is carpet and he was a little bit more generous because he wasn't quite sure how these young dogs were going to react and get a grip. So it was going to reduce their overall speed. So, but hey, I'd rather be slightly more generous with my time than he's got eliminate ten, everybody. Ten events to judge here at Crufts. Will he adapt those times, do you think? I do you think, think he, he might, might, might alter some of them? Say, okay. ask, ask me again Saturday night. All right. <laughs> but yes, I think he will. But as you say, if, if, we, if, if he'd have got every dog eliminated because it didn't get round in the time, we'd be sat here moaning at him. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. Uh, what would we rather have? Uh, uh, it's a spectator competition. And as you say, I think... And it is, it, it's very difficult because you've got no backdrop or nothing to gauge uh, previous, um, because every course is different, everyone's got different turns, so if you have uh, complicated sections it slows the dog right down, so that affects their average speed. It gets very technical, yep. very technical. Yep, indeed. Well the course is actually being changed out there for the next event, and the next event is the Agility, the Crufts team large final and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I love the team event and um, it's quite difficult to commentate on to, to be accurate you know precisely where everyone is positioned but we'll see how it goes and Graham I know will keep me right if I get it wrong I'll do my best Peter <laughs> but uh, just to remind everybody that uh, it's four dogs running uh, in a team uh, and it's a, uh, a baton change between each of the dogs. So it's not four separate runs, it's one continuous run until one the continuous team is finished. Time. What happens uh, on eliminations? If one dog is eliminated, is the team eliminated or do they get a maximum points fault? No, no, no. What happens with this now is that, that if, let's just say the first dog go round, they, they mark every elimination. So you could potentially end up with one dog in a team incurring 400 faults because it's 100 faults per elimination. So it could end up with four eliminations, 400 points on the points same round. On going the same round. So and it must complete the round. Yes, if it irrespective of whether it's made a fault. If it doesn't complete the round, then the whole team is eliminated. Or, right. or if any dog fouls the course, it's elimination for the whole team. Right. Well, we shall uh, see how that unfolds. Let's hope there's no team eliminations on this. But we've got uh, there we are. We've got uh, the rules of exactly how it goes. 100 faults for any elimination. Any faults incurred prior to the eliminations and those after the eliminations will be counted. Multiple eliminations by the same dog will incur 100 faults each time. Illegal changeover scores 20 faults. That's a new one for me. Um, uncompleted courses courses score further 100 faults. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. If you we can keep count you, of all. You might laugh, but I've judged um, some qualifiers for this uh, competition over the years, and I've seen batons thrown between handlers. I've seen them dropped. I've seen all sorts of things. I've seen them not bother with a changeover. It happens. Trust me. <laughs> it, 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 and the heat of the moment. Um, <laughs> now we have the final here uh, this was the semi-final wasn't it that uh, I've just got a, a sheet in front of me which uh, I shouldn't have been even looking at because uh, it's uh, it's from an earlier competition we have four teams taking place taking part in this and uh, we haven't had the results yet of the novice cup and we're just hoping that we do get the uh, clock in the corner of the screen for you uh, for the next event the large team final the teams are Thames again the Scunthorpe Bells Barnard Castle DBs and Whitehorse Agility Gold I'll explain more about those in just a moment 
Uh, yeah, it's Dick Farrer again, I believe, is going to be judging that. Um, and the order we see, they're run again re running in reverse order from uh, the semi-final from this morning. Fine. So I suspect that this is the running order as we'll have it. So we'll see Tem Thames again would have been fourth this morning. And the last of the qualifiers, Scunthorpe Bells were third, Barnard Castle was, third, was second, and Whitehorse Agility won in the semi-final. So there, that's the order, and they have the opportunity to go last. Four dogs in each team when they all appear. So as you see from the strap at the bottom of the screen there, coming up, the Agility Large Team Final. And here come the awards from the presentation for our last event. And I think we'll hand it over to the arena commentator because she has more of the facts than I do. They haven't uh, sent all the information up. So here we okay, go with the so arena first commentator. Of all, we're going to do the results of the Kennel Club Novice Cup Agility Round. So this is the individual round. In the smalls, in second place is Zoe Council and Jesse Blackjack. And the winner of the individual smalls is Dana Cooper with Bucket in a Million. And on to the mediums. In second place is Lara Staplehurst with Alfie's Surprise. And the winner of the medium individual agility round is Renata Mandova with Chelsea's Amber Sunshine. And on to the large. We have joint second place. That's Susie Josty with Cool Beans and Lisa Bailey with Rayanne Star Appeal at Castamaya. And the winner of the large individual agility round was Claire Arend with Denelor Golden Snitch. I guessed incorrectly, Claire Arend was quickest in that. OK, so, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to go to the overall winners of the Kennel Club Novice Cup final. So, in the smalls, in second place, with Jesse Jack Black. We're just getting our trophies sorted. So, please, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. In second place was Zoe Council with Jesse Blackjack. So that was second place for Zoe Council and Jesse Blackjack. And the winner of the Kennel Club Novice Cup Smalls was Dana Cooper with Bucket in a Million. OK, moving on to the mediums. In second place, we have Renata Mandova with Chelsea's Amber Sunshine. And the winner of the medium section was Lara Staplehurst with Alfie's Surprise. And on to the large. In second place was Susie Josty with Cool Beans. And the overall winner in the large section of the Kennel Club Novice Cup final was Claire Arend and Delanor Golden Snitch. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's lap of honour time. So uh, there are the results. And as you see, 
Claire Arend was the winner of the large and also the winner of the overall Novice Cup, which is absolutely tremendous. Congratulations to her. But it was terribly difficult without the actual timings coming up for us. Normally we have them in the bottom of the screen. I didn't see them, I didn't hear them. Um, we weren't getting the information from down in the ring. So it was a little difficult, but I hope it didn't spoil your enjoyment of it. And we'll be coming up very, very shortly with the large team final. The course is now complete. And any moment, uh, Dick Farrow will be inviting the competitors in the team final the large team final to come out and walk the course so four dogs in each uh, team as we've said each dog must complete the course a baton change worth 20 faults if they get it wrong so one way or another it could be a fascinating event just four teams taking part and i'm looking forward to it immensely i would just have to uh, hope that the team time does appear on the screen and then it'll be plain sailing. Good thinking. We can't comment on that, though, as it goes. But we, we weren't getting a feed of the times anyway. No one was telling us. this wonderfully lit arena the competitors for this team competition large dogs taking part in the team final are now walking the course and uh, an interesting one the first thing that's interesting is that uh, jump one which is over on the right hand side of the course just uh, coming up there it is is also jump 20 it's the first and the last one that could cause a problem or two Graham yeah, uh, looking at the way the course is set out, it shouldn't be a problem because you'll have one dog coming in and, and going at a different angle. But uh, it's an option open to the judge. Um, you don't see it often these days, but uh, it's a perfect valid setup. Um, uh, and we'll see how it goes. If, if, the la if the dog coming in knocks off the bar, there's no bar for the dog starting? No, there isn't. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and if the dog doesn't have to jump it, it depends what sort of timing equipment you've got as well. Uh, but the, yes, if there's no if there's no bar to knock down, then the dog goes. Providing it goes through the wings, that's no fault. Fine. It has to go Fine. through the wings. It's, it's a bit like fly ball, isn't it? If, if the, the one of the jumps gets knocked over, and another dog, because you can't reset it during the course of the run, uh, another dog jumps as long as they go over the jump that's not there. <laughs> that's right. Yep. That's still okay. Yeah. Okay. So yep. it's, uh, interesting course. Starts over there on the right-hand side. And uh, again, a few handling points in there. But it looks fairly straightforward in terms of being lined up to the next jump after you've completed one. There are one or two points where it isn't, but you're, you're nicely lined up, I think. It's actually quite an interesting start because they come over the, the White Kennel Club jump, um, which is actually, you can just see the back of it there, which sure. says finish. 
They've got a choice then of which way round they go round the second jump, which we're seeing there. It's actually, that is, eight is actually the back of two. So they come over two towards, towards us. us yeah. They then have an option whether they go to the right or the left of that jump to get it over jump three. Which is the one on the which left. Which is the one that's yep. side on to us as we look at it now. So it'll be interesting to see. The safer way is probably as they come over number two. Uh, great work by the cameraman there. They'll, if they turn left, it gives them a slightly straighter run onto three it takes if a they pull in. Go, it does, but it also gives them a better line onto the dog walk. Of it's course, a judgment call. Is, yes, that's it, yeah. Of course, and that's why they're walking the course. That's why they're actually taking a look at this. Where am I going to be when the dog comes over that and so on? And the, you, you get it all clear. Do, do, do other team tactics in this, or do you just go hell for leather with, no, with, with your there's, dog? There's definite team tactics. Um, I, I'll come back to that in just a sec, but just going back to the beginning, uh, bearing in mind that the, the second, third and fourth dogs, because it's a relay, what, the handlers won't already be on the course. So I would suggest that we're probably going to see the first dog go to the right of number two and then second, third and fourth because the handler's going to be behind it. We'll wait and see. I could be wrong. I see what you're saying, yes. Okay. Team well, tactics. We'll, we'll have fun watching yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Team tactics. If, uh, if each of the first three teams round has got 500 faults... <laughs> You say, take it easy, folks. Absolutely. We don't mind the few time faults. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. Yeah. But you can see these guys here walking the course now. Total concentration. They're trying to memorise it. And uh, they've, only, they've only had information on this for 20 minutes or so, haven't they? I mean, that's the thing. Yep, that's right. Um, just a picture there of Alison Roots from South Africa, resident in this country. And running for? Which team is she with? Uh, she's old Thames. Thames. She's a member she's, of Thames she's again. Thames. And then you've got the, uh, a family team actually running. At, at last the run, we've got White Horse Agility Gold. Uh, we've got uh, all members of the same family running, and, and all the dogs are related as well. But we'll talk a bit more oh, about really? that That's when we get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scunthorpe Bells. They obviously come from Lincolnshire, and I assume they're all Bells, and maybe these are two of them. There we go. Now look at that. That's two sisters together. We've got Lorna Peachy on the left and we've got Natasha Wise, three times world champion with medium dog on the right. Uh, stood in the middle is Lorna's uh, husband. And with his hand in his mouth standing next to Natasha, we've got Natasha's now fiance. All right. Congratulations to them. Yes, congratulations indeed. Uh, yes, Natasha's done remarkably well, hasn't she, over the years? And uh, it's good to see her here. I think remarkably well is possibly <laughs> an understatement. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. A she's little bit just, of an uh, To win uh, a world championship three times with the same dog is a feat that's, uh, at the time she did it, had never been done before. And, Ever. And still not. Uh, it, no, it, 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 actually, she... it actually happened. Um, Lisa Frick with a Border Collie Hoss did it about three hours later. Oh, you're joking. But she did it first. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Right. Well, they're members of the White Horse Agility Gold team. And uh, they're clearing the course. So Dick Farrell again will be uh, coming in uh, to... Joe, there he is, introduced to the crowd. He's walking in now. Well, he did very well with the novice course. What's he going to do with this? He's a very familiar figure around Crufts. Seen him here many, many times. In fact, every year, I should think. Yeah, it's a great reward for Dick. Uh, been a great servant to agility over the years, given up a lot of his time. Uh, this is the icing on the cake for him. Is he a poet is he, is he, or a painter? He's got the look of David Hockney or no, Alan Bennett he, about him. I believe him, he, used, he? he used to work for, I think he's an engineer, I think he used to work for Rolls-Royce. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me for saying he looks a little like David Hockney or Alan Bennett, but I, I was meaning it as a compliment. I think he'll probably take that as a compliment, <laughs> yeah. <I'd>, uh, <laughs> the butterflies will be going there now. I've, I've done a couple of big events and he'll be there thinking, just please let everything go OK for me. <laughs> And here comes the first team. Here's this is the team. This is Thames again. Running in black. Last year's winners. And it's a good event to win. They'll want to uh, repeat that win. Not sure whether it was exactly the same team. Um, I'm not sure that Alison Roots was part of the team last year. Uh, we're just waiting to see who's going to go. Who's going to go first? And, it's and Helen Cook they've already first. started. Now, four dogs going in this. So this is Helen Cook with Mitch. Mitch is a Border Collie. He's eight years old. Come from Wokingham near Reading. So 
So we'll just see the dog going round here now. Very good. Team event, remember. So faults are cum Ooh, cumulative. That was just slow. No fault for that. And wrong side into the weave. So there's a fault there. Show, indicated by uh, Dick Farrar. And now here we come for the changeover. And the, cha the baton change, they've done it. And that was a very neat changeover. Yep. And this is Andrew Dicker with Tag, Border Collie, nine years old, this dog. They come again from Reading in Berkshire. Yep. No clock to show you, I'm afraid, but uh, I hope that I will be given the either the manual timing or the result of a clock, which must be running somewhere. Always difficult as the first team to go because you don't know whether to go to put in four steady clears or whether just to go uh, and put pressure on other people. The secret is, is whatever happens, you've got to keep and going. There's the baton change and there's a good changeover again, very good changeover. As uh, we watch uh, Alison Rote with Ostara, who is a, a border collie, seven years old, this bitch. Yeah, although she's from South Africa, she actually represented uh, Great Britain this year. She became eligible. Uh, about 12 months ago to, to compete for Great Britain. Did really, really well. She hasn't already competed for the uh, FCI World Championships four times. Was, that's before she became eligible to compete for, for GB. Yep, yep, she competed for South Africa. And their final change, that's it. And this is Alan Smith with Chase Border Collie, six years old. Uh, Six-year-old dog. They come from Milton near Abingdon in Oxfordshire. Oh, and there's a fault. That's the first fault we've seen for the team. So, my word, this is actually a very good performance. I make it just five faults so far. Don't know the time. They're coming through. That's it. Now we need to get a tie. Five faults. So, we've got to wait for a team time. Absolutely pretty good. There they go. I think it was They'll be good. glad that's just all over with. Faults. Now they were four. And there we go. And a circle for the dog. Yep, lucky to get away with that in my opinion. But there you go. And again, she just pushed the dog the wrong way. Oh, Andrew almost falling over his dog. And, and a nice turn. So. Scunthorpe Bells, Peter. Scunthorpe Bells are the team, and the runners are Jackie Smith, Marilyn Murphy, Karen Marriott, and Georgina Baker, the Bells from Scunthorpe. And here we go. This is uh, Jackie Smith uh, from Lawton, the Scunthorpe, and uh, this is Zach, who's a 10-year-old Border Collie, a real veteran. The team qualified for this event from Nottingham. Oh, and, again. and an elimination. That's a hundred faults for the team, but they must complete the course. So difficult. And first dog to go for the team. The others in the team, their hearts must have sunk at that because I've got to say, Thames again were brilliant. And that's what it's all about, Peter, is putting in some good clear rounds. Absolutely. And that's what they did. Well, this is Marilyn Murphy uh, from Appleby with her border collie. I haven't got a pet name for it. Indie Storm Go Trek. I bet they call it Trek. Yeah, that's a good pet. First time at Crufts. But has competed, uh, Marilyn's competed in the Crufts team final before. Ooh. Oh, and a fault. So there's five there. And again, and another, another fault. one, two in succession. A third fault is an elimination, so they don't want that. Because that would give them 100 faults. Yeah, so that no, was two refusals. Good they got change away with that. there. Karen Marriott now from Gainsborough with Fetzer, who's a five year old Border Collie dog. First again, first time at Crufts for these. So it's all experience one. We'll probably see them again. Absolutely. Probably next year. And they're, they're quite quick as well. Yep. And they, they will get better. I mean, first time at Crufts, what an ordeal. I, I really feel for uh, Jackie Smith, who was first off. Yeah. <laughs> and bearing in mind, Peter, uh, we saw the novice dogs earlier on, and we're going to see the six and seven dogs later. This is an open competition, so dogs here could be grade one, two, or three even. It's open to grades one to seven Fine. in a team. Last to go then, Georgina Baker with Crumble, this cross read, another 10-year-old dog. 
came from, oh, and a missing contact point on the dog walk there. Crazy Crumble, 10 years old, competes at grade seven agility. Yep, so that just illustrates it as it's a grade seven dog. Nice turn there. This is Georgina's first ever agility dog. Third time she's competed at Crofts. Not bad, not bad, eh? But the team's struggling. The team is struggling. Well done. I make it 115 faults in total. Um, and uh, nowhere near as good as uh, Thames again. So they're not going to be in the frame in this final. So we come up next. It'll be Barnard Castle DBs. Oh, you see, she just just took her eyes off the dog there. That's a, such a shame for her. Such a shame. And then here we go. And look, she just starts to move towards the weaves before the dog gets there. And the same fault. But good effort there by Scunthorpe. Barnard Castle DBs. Not a team I'm totally familiar with, I have to say. But they've been led out by someone uh, who's uh, very familiar. This is Pat Brown going first. So the team consists of, uh, as you say, Pat Brown, Nigel Staines. Weena Brown and Jane Seller, that makes up 14. This, this is a twist aboard the collie. Nedlow Strictly, this is it. Uh, dog from Leslie Oldham's uh, line of litters. I was say, Nedlow is a very uh, famous name yep. in agility, isn't it? Pat's, Come, uh, sorry, Peter. Pat, I was just about to say, Pat's a fantastic handler. She's been around the circuit for a long time. Very experienced. Always turns out very well trained. Lovely dogs. And first time for the dog at Cross. Absolutely. Well, that's a good round. That's a good round there. This is the famous Nigel Staines. Nigel yeah. Staines, yes. With, now, we're not sure whether this is Zuma, because he's got two dogs. He's got Zico and Zuma, both the Kelpies. I'm not sure which one he's running here. Let's call it Zuma for now. It's a Kelpie, five years old. If it wasn't, it was Zuma, who's 11. I think this is a younger dog, just looking at it. Yeah, I think it is, as I say, the winner of probably of more ABC Olympia titles than anybody else, I think, just about over the years. Yes, they've, they've almost taken over from the Border Collies in speed, haven't they, in, uh, in agility. Another good round, another good round, clear for Nigel Staines. This is Edwina Brown with uh, Pitt, who's another Border Collie, three years old. They come from Kirby Stephen. Oh, and an oh, elimination, dear. there's 100 faults there for the team. Oh, and that's going to be a hundred faults. Such a shame for the team. A hundred faults there, which leaves Thames again in and it, a wonderful position. So I tell you, you're, you're, those, those girls and gentlemen from White Horse Agility are going to have to do very well to win this. Wow. But here we go with Jane Seller, last to go with Wiz, her border colleague. Third year at Croft for Wiz. He's qualified for both the teams and the championship competition, so no mean feat that. They come from a lovely town up in Northumberland, Morpeth. Yeah, and bearing in mind, as I said earlier on, they've all had to compete, uh, qualify to get here, so they've all done fantastically well in the first place. That's right, and Wiz is actually an obedience, uh, an agility champion, Rose Marinas Rum Runner, uh, winning his third championship class in Dundee. A good run, but with those 100 faults, they're in uh, trouble at the end there. So they're out of it, they're in third place uh, as we currently stand as we come with our final team. This is the yep. White Horse Agility and Gold. She, as you saw there, unfortunately, that was the emanation. Just turned her shoulders uh, and brought the dog the wrong way. Such a shame. Such a shame. Now, we have White Horse Agility Gold. And this is Natasha Wise, who's going first with Jive, her border collie. First time at cross for this dog. By no means the first time at cross for Natasha Wise, my word. She's experienced, very successful, very skillful, a really wonderful and fast over the ground as well. This team has got to go, son. Only five faults uh, for Thames again, who went first. And this is what they have to beat. They'll be determined and they're capable of doing it, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely, Peter. Uh, uh, they won the jumping round this morning. Uh, almost a faultless performance. 
and they've got a very experienced team. And bearing in mind that uh, this is the younger of uh, Natasha's uh, dogs. Oh, and what a great a round that was. Round. That was quick as well. Handing and over to her sister. That's right, Lorna Peachy with Mint. Four-year-old border collie. White horse, of course, in the title of the, the team there. That's the white horse on the hills of Dorset, is that right? Yep. This is a much different dog and a much different round to Natasha's. As much All more of a five. Ooh. They've got five. They're now level with Thames. They are yep. now level with Thames if they have no more faults. A much busier dog. But there we go, kept it together, still only on five, and I think they're going to be quicker if they can stay as they are now. The time could determine it. If they don't have any more faults, time will do it. Keep your eyes on Dick Farrar. This is uh, <laughs> Matt Goodliffe, this is uh, Natasha's fiance. This is Quincy, four year old border collie with him. They come from Rickmansworth. Fab little dog, says Matthew. Oh, Has nice been the winner there. of the uh, Olympia Cup. Yep, it's had a pretty good 12 yep. months. The yep. novice Olympia Cup, yeah. And a pretty good Four 12 years months. Old well, they are quick. Are they quick enough? This is Simon Beachy now from Dick Cut. Oh, Simon. Oh. 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 Well, that's that's it. Oh. Just five for a refusal. Such the dog's a shame. called DJ. They've been in the singles final and Olympia final many times. Oh, and another five. She's dropping its legs there. Simon's going to be gutted. I think his shoulders have gone down because I think as soon as he had that refusal, he knew, he knew that they'd actually blown it. They probably would it. have done it on time, yeah. but they haven't done it overall. Thames again are going to have won the large team final here at Cross, and it was a terrific competition. Again. Thames again. The second time running, second year running. Well done, Graham. Yes, it was. Second year running for Thames again. And there you the go. four members of the Thames again team are going to be very pleased. Very this nice changeover. Look, oh. his shoulders. Oh, and he tries to turn back, oh, just doesn't recover it. If he'd made it onto there, he'd have recovered it, wouldn't he? That would have been fine. But I, I'm not sure that Dick time. hadn't actually marked him running past the start of the dog walk the first time. Uh, it was debatable think, whether it did, yeah. if you're in a straight line, but there you go. Yeah. Well, I think but anyway, one way or the other, well, it's still, it's still it's, uh, it's fine. But that's a shame. So Thames again win the large team final. White Horse Agility Gold are second. Barnard Castle DBs will be third, and Scunthorpe Bells bring up the rear but it's no disgrace to be in a final here at Crofton before absolutely as I say all of these teams the one including the ones that were in the quarter final this morning um, they'll have had to have actually won a competition because you have to win a, a heat to be here I mean 50 60 70 dogs uh, not dogs sorry I mean 50 60 70 teams teams yes yeah. uh, so no, there's no, sh no shame in, uh, in in not winning the final here <laughs> it really is tremendous but it does mean that Helen Cook, Alan Smith, Alison Roets and Andrew Dicker win for the second year running here at Grafts, the large team agility final, and well done to them. So they're setting up now for the presentation. Proud moments for those who've competed and won. Disappointment for those who competed and lost, but uh, great entertainment for the crowd here. And it really is, this is the first day of the show, of course. First day of the four days here, and it's a working day, so it isn't absolutely packed, but the arena's been good. Here we come for the presentation. Let's hand over to the arena commentator. In second place, it was the Thames Again team of Helen Cook, Andrew Dicker, Alison Rowitz, and Alan Smith.
And in first place, the winners were White Horse Agility Gold. Well done to Matthew, Laura, Simon, and Natasha. It's lap of honor time. <laughs> 